Okay, so I'm really happy today to be introducing a um, social meditation practice called What is Loving Awareness? And this is a social inquiry practice, meaning that we're using a question as a prompt for discovery. That's our kind of primary practice. And we're not just doing that by ourselves internally, as is often done in many traditional forms of inquiry practice. But rather, we're going to be doing this out loud and together. And I just wanted to mention that social inquiry of all the forms of social meditation that, that I'm familiar with in a practice and teach, this is one that, for me, it has some deeper roots. Um, I first became aware of social inquiry through um, something called the Enlightenment Intensives, uh, which are these kind of re intensive retreats where people actually do dyad, uh, dyadic inquiry. They kind of sit across from each other and keep asking, you, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And there's different, of course, forms of that and formats. Um, but it's essentially similar, really similar to what we're going to be doing today in that we're going to be working with a, a particular question, what is loving awareness? And we're going to be um, taking turns inquiring out loud, out loud together. Um, and so it, it's very similar to the Enlightenment Intensive uh, kind of experience. Except with Enlightenment Intensives, my understanding is that the primary question is, who are you? Uh, who am I? Here, we're, we're using social inquiry as a format that can include any number of questions, so long as those are questions that help deepen our kind of investigation, inquiry, or our contemplation of, you know, this experience, what it's like to be alive. Um, and these, these, these types of inquiry questions, um, as I think many of you already know, they're, they're not questions that have a clear objective or rational answer all the time. Um, it, it's not the kind of question that you can solve on a board. You know, it's not a mathematical question. It's not a question that um, it's going to be completely resolvable and everyone will agree with the answer. Um, this is a question that's very much about uh, an exploration of our own interiors and not just our own interiors, but our intersubjective uh, experience of our interiors, the way that our, our interiors experience arises in concert with one another. Um, and so in this practice, we're going to be directing the inquiry in specifically toward this investigation or this curiosity about uh, what is loving awareness? What is loving awareness? Uh, uh, we're using this phrase in part because it's, it's a translation of the Buddhist phrase metta, uh, which is often translated as loving kindness. A lot of my teachers uh, in recent years, especially Jack Kornfield and Trudy Goodman, I think in large part because of their friendship with uh, the late Ram Dass, um, really kind of ended up preferring this translation of loving awareness over loving kindness. And I find it to be a really just an interesting investigation, an interesting question. Um, and, it, and it sort of brings together these two elements, right, of awareness and, and heartfulness, these two, these two ways of practice. And of course, we're using inquiry to, to do that. So this is really a complex practice in that there's multiple, really multiple notes that we're hitting on and, and looking into in our experience. There's the, there's the open heart, there's the uh, awareness itself, being, and then there is this process of using the mind to, to question, to inquire, to become curious, to, um, to drop our sense of certainty about what is this thing that we are looking into. Um, so the basic instructions for this practice are we're going we're gonna to go into small groups of three to four people each, and we're going to take turns inquiring aloud. What is loving awareness? And then the other thing I'd add to this instruction is it's, with social inquiry, it's really helpful when we're working just with the questions to have a gap or a space between questions. So to be able to actually sit for, say, at least a half of a breath and let the question kind of work on us. Um, there's a tendency sometimes to um, not sit in the question, but rather use more and more questions to kind of keep us in, you know, uh, entertained. 
uh, engaged in a, in a way where we're not actually falling deeply into the, the practice. Uh, and so the, the gap is important to kind of give space for really sitting with the question to receiving it and to, and to, um, to holding it.